Hey guys, I'm Vlad from Lighter, and we're here at ETH Denver to announce ZK Lighter, which is uh, a new approach we have to uh, Ethereum native order book exchanges um, with a novel zero knowledge construction. So I'm excited to talk you through kind of why this problem is important, how we went about solving it, some of the architectural decisions, you know, what some of the applications are, and um, talk about the work ahead and open it up in case folks have questions. Um, so, so just kind of um, for some background, right? Um, let me kind of start high level. So what types of exchanges are there? You know, the most common type of exchange um, across finances is, is what's called an order book, right? So in an order book, there's competition between all participants, retail, market makers, high frequency traders, and others, kind of anybody could submit or bid at an offer. Anyone could uh, take that bid or offer. It's, it, you know, it's the most efficient price discovery mechanism. Um, but this type of exchange works best when you have low costs and low latency. So in practice, uh, you know, in, in the crypto world, like most uh, of the applications of order books have been centralized kind of until some of the technology that we're going to talk about today. But, but the order book model is kind of um, from a finance perspective, from a um, market efficiency perspective, is the most efficient way to design an exchange. Some, of, some other approaches are an RFQ, where basically market makers compete to fill orders from retail. This one has some good properties, but there's less incentives for efficient price discovery because the market makers aren't trading with each other. They're just, as long as they win that one order, th that's all they're trying to do. So it's not, it's a lot less efficient than a system where anybody could trade with anybody. Um, and of course, um, the most common one in our space has been an AMM, which uh, is much cheaper to operate um, because it's passive market making, but it's also the worst for price discovery. Um, and you know, an exchange could be used for any kind of marketplace, whether it's trading token pairs, perpetuals, you know, could be used for lending, um, for bridging, options, NFTs, prediction markets, or even tokenized stocks. So, so this is, you know, this kind of technology could be used to build many types of marketplaces. And so, just to give you guys an idea, you know, I spent, before um, working on Lighter and kind of building in the space, I spent a bunch of time doing high frequency trading at uh, Citadel and other places. And just to give you guys an idea, like, the way, that what that looks like, right? I mean, there's thousands of orders happening per second, usually 100 million orders per day or more. And most of the orders are canceled and replaced. So there's a lot of activity. You know, percentage of orders that are actually filled is usually around 1%. But the reason why all this activity is happening is because market makers are competing with each other for the best prices. And as long as anything changes, it's, uh, you know, it's to their advantage to quickly update their positions uh, and their orders. And so this is actually the best possible experience for consumers because it, it leads to very low spreads and you have liquidity kind of in any market environment for any asset. Um, and the most important guarantee for consumers, you know, if you think about like, how do you ensure trust? Um, I mean, you know, besides the basic ones like asset custody and trade verification, the most important one is what we call verifiable matching, right? Which means like, can you cryptographically guarantee that, uh, you know, to put it simply, you're not screwed over when you send a trade into the market, that you're going to get a fill that's at a fair market price? And so, as an example, AMMs are verifiable, but they don't actually do matching. So, uh, so what happens is cryptographically verified, but the price you get may not be the fair market price. You know, it's subject to MEV, it's subject to sandwich attacks, um, and so on and so forth. Centralized or hybrid exchanges do matching, but not in a way that's verifiable. You know, if you send a market order out there, you don't really know that it was matched with something at the top of the book and in the priority that you sent it in. It could have been matched with something somewhere else in the order book. Um, you might be getting a price that's not the fair price, and you wouldn't even know it. Now, this problem, uh, you know, a lot of people have thought about this. The hard part of, of it is like, how do you do this in a way? that has this property, but it's also cheap, as cheap and fast as centralized exchanges, yet has the security of Ethereum. And that's what we've been um, working on figuring out you know, with, with ZK Lighter. So basically, the solution we came up with is 
And this is a very general solution. Like I said, it could be used for many types of marketplaces. But it's an application-specific ZK rollup with custom ZK snark circuits. So, um, and I'll talk about some of the architecture decisions in, in a minute. But uh, you know what ZK Lighter has is a verifiable matching engine that ge generates uh, succinct proofs. Uh, and this is where the you know the, the ZK snarks come in for price, time, priority, order matching. So. In other words, uh, it's it's guaranteed that when when you send an order, the order was matched fairly, right? And and it has all the other properties you want, uh, being scalable, secure, transparent, and non-custodial. Um, so, one of the things we um, uh, that we introduced as as part of this is a new type of data structure, an order book tree data structure, which basically. It's an it's an it's a tree that stores the bids and offers in the order book in a way that inherits the properties you want from a perfect binary tree and a Merkle tree. So it ensures proper price time priority of order execution, and because of um, the Merkle tree aspects, is able to efficiently uh, generate proofs of the order matching. Um, so we made a couple of architecture decisions here that were key to. Um, the, the, this initial version of ZK Lighter. So one is, uh, you know, using these, building these custom circuits, or using a ZK VM where you know you could write code in Solidity that that operates an order book, and that's also verifiable. But the performance is much much different. Even I mean, and the ZK VMs have been making a lot of progress, but even in kind of the um, state of the art. Of, of that tech, I mean, the performance we can get from custom circuits is 10,000 times cheaper and 100 times faster. And so that that really is the same kind of performance as you'd get from a centralized exchange. Um, another big decision was, do we launch this? Because you know, this is an app-specific rollup. Do we launch this as an L2 directly on top of Ethereum or as an L3 on top of uh, one of the uh, existing L2s? And we made the decision to launch on top of ZK Sync Era L2, because we're inheriting um, some additional properties there in terms of um, you know cheap uh, proof aggregation and the way they handle state. So we, we're th this this makes the um, basically if it, we weren't doing this, it would be only a thousand times cheaper instead of ten thousand times cheaper than a simple Solidity implementation. So an extra 10x um, benefit. Um, another big decision is uh, in terms of data availability, right? So if you, again, going back to the point that uh, in, when, you, when you have kind of the sufficient market of high frequency trading, you know, most orders are not filled. Most orders are canceled and replaced. And so the question is, what happens to all that data? Certainly, the actual trades need to, go, need, need to get posted on the base layer. But we made a decision that uh, it, it would be as long as the proofs that the orders were matched correctly are published, like the actual individual orders and cancels can just live on the L3. They don't have to be published um, for, for, you know, in the rollup. And this saves a lot of cost as well. Um, finally, a decision was made around you know, what proving system do we use. You know, Groth 16 has some challenges around like the first, the one-time setup. Uh, having doing the ceremony, you know. So, w but once you do that, the costs of running it are still about four x cheaper. Uh, so this decision also is part of what, how we get to such um, such low cost of performance. Um, th there, there is that one time um, setup complexity. But these circuits, you know, we're not planning to change them very much. So once that happens, it's um, it'll kind of work from there. So in terms of um, uh, you know. The next steps here, right? So, this week the test net for zk lighter will be live, and um, you know we look forward to seeing what folks build on top of it. You know, our team is building two products on top of it in the coming months, which are which would be for trading spot and perps, but uh, it could be used for any kind of um, decentralized marketplace. Kind of the next steps beyond that, there's some really big problems to tackle here, right? So, one is decentralizing the sequencer. Um, and you know, a lot of rollups are working on this, right? Obviously, the L2s and um, an app-specific rollup like zk Lighter would need eventually to decentralize the sequencer too. We're actively working on this next because uh, that's that's kind of the last step here. You know, the sequencer already has all these nice properties around verifiable matching. I think to um, to prevent any kind of 
meth to happen even at the millisecond level. Um, and to introduce things like time lock encryption, you know, doing that in a way when the sequencer is decentralized will be a hard problem. So if there are folks who are working on problems of uh, sequencer decentralization, you know, MEV resistance, time lock encryption, we'd love to collaborate. Definitely come find us at the conference. Um, another aspect, I mentioned the trade-off we made around data availability. There is a question of, you know, for, you know, for future versions, does it make sense to have some data availability, you know, for the market makers or participants who do care about every single order and cancel that occurred, like what, what should the longer term solution for that look like and how, how's that, um, what, you know, potentially what would the tokenomics for that data look like as well. That's a really interesting problem. And then the, the last one is kind of thinking about for market participants who are not able to trade, basically who love all the properties of the efficiency, but you know, but the only reason they want to trade on a centralized exchange is because of KYC ML. I mean, with a lot of what's um, possible with ZK, you can also do on-chain KYC ML. So, you know, folks working on that, we'd love to speak to as well and collaborate on, on that kind of for future versions as well. So, yeah, so those are kind of some of the next steps. Um, any questions, come find us um, down here. Uh, our white paper, um, Here's um, the link. We're, we're publishing it now for the first time. We've had a couple of, um, of folks review the paper, and um, it's been um, it's been really great to get feedback from the community. Now now it's published, and um, definitely email us as well if uh, if you're not physically attending the conference and have questions about it. We'd love to uh, to address those and discuss possible ways to collaborate. Um, and that's all. We'll be down here to take any questions if you guys have them. Uh, thank you.